You are listening to Packers Talk Radio Network. Packers Talk. Eddie Lacy, Mike Daniels, Gilbert Brown, Don Barclay, Micah Hyde, your Green Bay Packers, yesterday's legends and today's superstars. From corporate or nonprofit events to private parties, add some spice. Hire a Packers player from Mayfield Sports Marketing. For details, just go to PackersTalk.com and click on Player Appearances. Are you looking for some signed Packer memorabilia? Look no further than Waukesha Sports Cards. If the Green Bay Packer can sign it, Waukesha Sports Cards has it. Check our website for upcoming Packer player and legend signing. Go to WaukeshaSportsCards.com. She gets home from Clubhouse because she wanted to watch a, a radio show or a TV or a podcast or whatever better than our show. And then there's Jay dealing with the landlords from hell tonight. So if I was Jay, I wouldn't be on the on the air either because I'd be madder. Holy cats! Is my living my living room overrun by a plague of ladybugs? Yuck! Oh, I just looked up at the ceiling. I love this time of year in Wisconsin. So hey, we're out of the pocket and we have our international correspondent Thaddeus. Collins on tonight, or as Annie likes to say, Sadrick. Hey, there guys. Is? Yes, I am. I'm not on mute, I hope. <laughs> no, you're not on mute. Uh, yeah, so our London correspondent joins us again, because I think he actually was able to see the game yesterday, correct? Uh, part of it. Most of it. <laughs> I finally figured out who Jeff Janis was, so that's good. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> So, is this the first game you've seen this year, or have you been able to, uh, that a uh, Packer game? Because I know that that the NFL has broadcast in London. Um, because there's been some London games. Have you been able? Did you go to any of the London games, by the way? No, they're they're way too expensive. It's not worth it. Yeah, that's right. When you start converting in your head from pound yeah. sterling to, to English units, yeah. like, whoa, that's a really expensive, crappy football game. <laughs> yeah, like three hundred and fifty pounds, which is probably like five hundred and fifty dollars. Not worth it to see, like, the Jets or the, you know, the Dolphins. Um, yeah, that wouldn't be money for it. If we can get the Packers over next year, that would be really good, though. You do realize that the Packers are we're all sleeping in your living room, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to work it out with the roommates, but we can we can make it happen. I will make you That'll guys and all, all of you a, a traditional English fry-up for breakfast if you let us all crash there. Okay. That sounds like a good uh, bidding point to start with. <laughs> There we go. Bidding points. I will cook for you. All right. Yeah. So, hey, the Packers had an ugly win. But as I pointed out this morning on Twitter, unlike the BCS where there are arbitrary style points that are completely subjective, there are absolutely no style points in football. And the Packers are 6-0. and So, Thad, you saw one of the few games this season that you were able to see. What were your just initial impressions about it? I've actually seen most of the games except for the, like, the late <laughs> clock games. Uh, but, I mean, I kind of like ugly wins. I feel like no matter what the sport, uh, ugly wins are the mark of a really good team. So, I mean, you, I mean, I don't know if you guys remember, like, five, six years ago, these are games that we would lose um, to teams that are on our level. So, when you can find a way to win, even if it's ugly, that's always a positive, in my opinion. So, why do you think these are even better? You said these sometimes this proves that you're the better team. I know you, you just said that we, we tend to lose these in the past. Um, case in point, I think this was the toughest quarterback we uh, took on. So what do you think of of the Packers 
allowing like 500 yards in the air or something ridiculous like that, but they still lost. So what are your, what are your thoughts on, on kind of overtaking uh, Philip Richards? Philip, Philip Rivers, sorry. Yep. Well, I mean, it's one of those correlation, uh, not causation things. You know, giving up a lot of yards normally correlates to a lot of points. It doesn't necessarily mean to give up a lot of points. So if you can find a way to still win, just like giving up a record number of yards, you know, you take it. I know it's ugly, but the, the, the point of the game is to give up less points than you score. Sorry, guys, this is New York City. It's to give up less points than you score. So, um, I, I mean, I, I'm really happy with it. I mean, I don't necessarily mind having a defense that, uh, you know, bends or doesn't break. I know a lot of people don't like watching it, but I'm fine with it, you know, as long as we ultimately end up winning the game. All right. So, Annie, what were your initial impressions about the game? Well, I actually got to go to the game, which was kind of awesome. And so we were off in the south end zone, which was all cushy, because it was like, you know, like plastic chairs with backs on them and cup holders. And I was like, what? Anyway, I'll talk more about that later when Sad has to sign off. But um, I, I tend to agree. I tend to look at these games as positive because when you look at really, really good teams and the ones that tend to go the distance, it's the ones who can win those games that are really, really tough where people don't play their best. Like, you know, even Rodgers or, you know, some key players don't have their best games. They have those let, let down games that are to be expected. And when they do that, the Packers as a team still find a way to win. And so I, I really like that. I like to look at it that way rather than going, oh, we have so many problems we have to fix. Sure, we have some scheme issues to figure out, and, yeah, we have some injuries to deal with, and we seem to be kind of missing that um, some pieces that could really help uh, even things out a little bit, especially on offense. But in the end, I like to see when things get ugly that we still come out with the win in the end, and now we're 6-0. So, woohoo! Yeah, I think you really hit on it, um, and, and Thad mentioned it as well. You look at a team a couple of years ago, or even last year for that matter, and I think they wouldn't have won it. I think they would have been. this would have been a game they would have lost last year. Um, I think that this reminds me a lot of 2010 with the, Latin, the next man up. The fact that nobody knows who our receiving core is right now is really a testament to the grit of the offense. You know, Lacey didn't have a good day, so Stark scored twice. Um, Montgomery went out, so Aberderis played, and Jan- Janice, we'll talk about him a little bit more in a little bit, actually didn't have that bad of a day. I think it really was one of what they, they always call one of the a team victories. Where it wasn't one, where it wasn't one like the offense or the defense winning the game, where they just they worked together and held it together, and made um, San Diego earn every point. Or and and uh, fortunately, we came out a, a winner. So let's talk about that offense. Um, Rogers didn't have that great of a day. You know, he he had kind of what, if you compare it to Rogers' esque type numbers, it was fairly pedestrian. And you know, that said. Um, his statistics are something the 80s and early 90 Packers would love to have had. Um, so, Sad, what, what did you think of Rogers' performance yesterday? I, um, I mean, I don't. I, again, like I'm not really big on yards. I don't play fantasy anymore. So for me, like you know, a uh, quarterback not having you know 350 yards, four touchdowns isn't really a big deal to me. You know, you, you sort of want your quarterback to maintain possession, keep the ball, keep the you know, keep the yards. Um, or keep the drive going. And beyond that, that's, I'm pretty fine with it. You know, we've been very lucky with Rodgers over the past, I don't know, six or seven years being a very elite quarterback. But honestly, there's just some games where you're not going to have it, and, you know, you're down a couple of weapons or receivers or whatever, and you've got to find a way to just keep yourself in the game. Uh, I mean, you look at the Colts game later that day, and, you know, Andrew Luck was able to keep his team in the game for a bit, but then he faltered. So, you know, like I said, five years ago, maybe Rodgers couldn't have kept us in a game like that, and Phil Rivers throwing for 500 yards would be, you know, a, a automatic loss. But so he sort of did what he had to do, Rodgers did, and kept us in the game. You know, the defense bent, they bent but didn't break, and, you know, ultimately became aware of the win. So I don't know. I, I feel like I'm one of the rare minority Packers fans that ultimately I'm results oriented. So as long as we get the win, I don't really care how it happens. But. <laughs> You know, well, I would love to beat up teams 47-3 and three every week. As long as they're winning and, you know, we keep the injuries to a minimum, I'm relatively content. All right. So you, you brought up that we have the walking wounded with the uh, receiving core. 
Um, James Jones wasn't 100%. Randall Cobb still is not 100%. Montgomery went out with looks like a garden variety ankle sprain is what Ian Rappaport, I think, was reporting today, so it was nothing serious. So we're down to the B team, so to speak, and definitely deep into the B team with the receiving court. Do you think that factored into Rodgers with a pedestrian day, or do you think it just was he was off? What, what do you think about that, Thad? Well, I think, uh, I mean, you, you have to think of, I mean, I don't want to compare myself to a quarterback. With some days, you know, you go into work, you just don't really, like, have it. You just go in and you're just like, today's going to be one of those days where I'm just going to drag myself through it. So I think the culmination of the injuries and, you know, maybe it just wasn't his day. And I feel like maybe the last couple of weeks he really has sort of been off. Um, and you don't really know. Sometimes, you know, players carry injuries that we don't really know about. So maybe he has, you know, something he's dealing with. I don't want to speculate anything. We're not breaking any news here. But, um, you know, maybe he's got a little niggle that he's dealing with that this week off will really help him deal with. Um, so, you know, I, for the most part, again, as long as they're sort of getting the results done, then, like, that's pretty much all that matters in my book. All right, then. So, Annie, if you're there, um, I know you, you're kind of multitasking right now. Um, I'm going to yeah. bounce the same same question to you if you have time. Uh, do you think um, Rogers' poor performance in the air, relatively speaking, um, he still had, like, a passer rating, like, I think I want to say 107 is what I heard last night, and I was half brain dead driving home last night. Um do you think it's a factor if he's having a bad day, or do you think it's because he's really thrown to the B team with the receivers? You know, I think that's a part of it. Um, I think that especially Ty Montgomery going down, obviously losing Jordy has overall really affected our our long game. You know, I mean, I think what teams are basically doing is they're saying, all right, uh, you really have anybody that you super trust right now to go for the long ball. Um, when you have to try, a lot of times it gets dropped. Um, James Jones is, is to a point capable, but at the same time, um, a lot of times one defender can cover him. Um, and so I think that what teams are doing is saying, hey, we're going to double up Randall Cobb, who's your best weapon right now. We're going to try and make you beat us with, uh, you know, with, with your rookie, basically, you know, with your young kids and, and James Jones, the old guy and see if, you know, you can't get it done that way. And I think the other thing is that they're doing a good job of keeping him contained, um, not letting him out of the pocket so much. Um, and who knows? I mean, maybe if that's right, maybe there's a little bit of an ankle thing going on or a little bit of a knee thing or something got tweaked, and so he's not quite as mobile as usual. I don't know. Who knows? Um, they're not going to say anything if it's something minor that's not going to affect his ability to play. So I think that between um, the opposing defense's ability to take away some of our, um, you know, our significant weapons on the tossing game, well, then we've got Lacey who's been injured. Um, that hasn't helped. Starks, I think, had a really good game. Um, I was surprised that they didn't go go to him on that third and one where we did our classic long bomb, you know, 30 yard toss down the field when, you know, we really only needed a yard, but whatever. That's kind of a Packers thing, thing to do. So, I don't know. I don't know if he's hurt or not, but I do appreciate the fact that uh, despite all the yards they got and despite the fact that Rodgers didn't have his best game and despite the fact that we had a lot of injuries, injuries going on, that we were still, still able to come away with the win. Yeah, and I think you're on to something. Um, they're making Rodgers really go to his tertiary choices whether it's a tight end, you know, Justin Perillo was a target yesterday, or Jeff Janis, because let them, and we'll talk about Janis in a, in a few minutes. Um, if you're going to your less sure target, you're more likely to drop the ball. And I think and you're right, you're spot on, Annie. I think they're going to contain um, James Jones because he knows, they, they, everyone in the entire league knows that that's going to be his reliable target. They're going to double team. Randall Cobb, which means right now it's down to Jeff Janis, who's still, I think, a really, a really fairly rough. And I know he's not a rookie, but he still makes kind of rookie mistakes. So since I mentioned Janis, let's talk about Jeff Janis. Um, we do need to let Sad go here. So, in a few minutes, so Sad, I'm going to ask you one more question about Jeff Janis before I cut you loose, okay? Is that all right? All good. All right, Jeff Janis. Is I, he I, the – your thoughts. I'm just going to leave it open-ended. I literally, I wasn't joking when I, after, I, before I read uh, Jay's article, I had no idea he was on the team. <laughs> I have really been really bad, actually. I remember he was like, I, you know, I recall now that he was drafted last year. You know, essentially he was like red-shirted or red-flagged, whatever the term is. 
Um, but I literally had no idea that so everyone was talking about this guy. I thought it was a joke. And then I realized he's actually on the team. Um, so, like, I mean, he's a, I always like young guys. So I like guys that, you know, have potential. Um, I think he's a bit more hype than, you know, actual substance right now. But ultimately, you know, as long as he gets Rogers' confidence, I think he'll be fine. And I think, you know, he went a long way this week, especially with that shovel pass, to get a bit of that confidence and have Rogers trust in him. I mean, if I recall correctly, I remember when Randall Coppers came in, like Rogers never targeted him at all because he didn't really know what he was about, didn't really trust him, and then they grew into a you know a very good relationship. So, I mean, I think it, it definitely takes a while to get there. And as long as, you know, he puts in the work on the practice field, um, I think there's, you know, there's room for him to grow. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to see what he does, not because I'm a big Jeff Janis fan, but just because we actually just need him to do stuff because we have so many injuries right now. Oh, definitely. And, and I want to follow this up. Um, there was one giant pass. Okay, unfortunately, it didn't end at any point. But a giant pass to Jeff Janis way in the corner near the end zone. Um, if you watch the film, Richard Rodgers is in the area. He falls down. And Jeff Janis just kind of pops out of nowhere and catches it. Um, Rodgers was asked by Lori Nichol, and she clarified that, he, yes, he intended to, to throw to Janis. But if you watch the film, I'm not so convinced, and I think Janice was running was within a a split second of knocking out Richard Rogers. Do you remember that play, and what's your opinion of it? Is uh, that for me? Yeah, it's for you. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty much like the schoolyard play, right? So, I mean, I don't really care who it's for, but like it's a schoolyard play. Everyone's running around, and um, I, Rogers sort of throws it up, and then you know, I mean, if if uh, the other Rogers fell down, I mean, and it was actually for him, then it would have been an incomplete pass. So I don't really, I mean, I, I like, if anything, I like the sort of hustle and grit, if you were, uh, that Janice showed to be in a the right place, even if it was at the wrong time, you know. So it, it all worked out in the end, and ultimately I think it's a positive play that he was able to be in, a, in an area where you can, you know, get possession of a ball and, you know, make a very important catch. All right, then. So, Annie, do you remember the play I'm talking about? Yeah, but I think we should uh, let uh, let Sad go here. Sad. And okay. Hang with so, <laughs> my beautiful Sad. love, I love you guys. Um, I don't know if you're doing one next week. I know there's a I know it's a bye week, but if you're doing one next week, I can join in as well. All right, Please, tune in next it. week as our London correspondent, <laughs> Sad Ward Collins. Breaking news! Breaking news! Sad yeah. Rick. Sad Rick. Yes. Sad Rick will be joining us. Yes. And I love yeah, you guys. Thank you. We love having you on. We miss you dearly. I wish you were here this weekend for I know, I know. It's, it'll, it'll happen. It'll happen. You'll come back. You'll come back to your mate. So give it up for Thaddeus Collins. Thanks, guys. Woo-hoo. Go Pack Go. Thank you, Thad. Have a good go night. Yep, yep, Bye. Too. All right. So he has, like, a social schedule, which leaves the two of us who apparently do not. <laughs> oh, no. It's All happening. right. So, do you remember that play? It's like Rodgers has gone on the record saying, oh, I totally meant to throw it to him. I'm not so convinced. And I'll give you my two cents after I get yours. So what do you think of that play? You know, um, like you guys have mentioned in the past, I did not bring my fancy binoculars. And so it was hard for me to see um, exactly how that play developed. Um, and I, I did see, however, on the big screen, uh, the replay and everything, and, yeah, it looked to me like it was more of a, oh, I'm going to toss it up to this area. And thankfully, Janice was there to be able to come down with it. So I don't know if it was planned. I did not see it. I did record the game so that I could watch it eventually. But I literally got back from Wisconsin at 2, no, one thirty today, and I'm still at work right now. So I haven't had the chance. But it was pretty legit. And when I saw it, I kind of shrieked, Janice, just because we kind of had this running joke about Janice on the show, so I was kind of excited to talk about him. All right, I'm not at. I am. I'm going to go on the record that I'm not convinced that was was uh, intended for Janice. And yes, he looks like a brilliant genius for catching it. But I kept thinking, and I looked at my dad. You know, you met my old man, Dad. Um, I uh, yeah, I met Jim. Yes, awesome. yes. All right. So don't you agree? He's like an older version of Jay. <laughs> He is, and he's hilarious because he basically kind of took over for Jay for giving me a whole lot of crap. And so yeah, he just like, kind of deadpans it. 
Well, anyway, yeah, I was with my dad, and I'm like, I don't think that was for him. Because Janice looks like a genius because he caught it. But what if he had knocked Rogers, Richard Rogers out in the process or totally dropped the ball? You know there would have been a huge dose of butt-chewing that would have gone on. Like, oh, my God, run your stinking round. Yeah. No, seriously. So those like, great were first in goal. But, yeah. if, but if he would have screwed up that play, it would be, you know, there would have been hell to pay, I think. Because I really don't oh, think he was running yeah. his route. We're playing Probably 500. Not. I'm just going to bomb it out there. Somebody please catch it. Yay, at least it wasn't the other team. I don't think we had any interceptions this week, though, did we? So that's awesome. No, we no, we had plenty last week. So, uh, yeah. No, we had no interceptions. Um, Rogers did not fumble the ball. He was sacked three times. Um, he seemed like he was scrambling for his life a couple times. So you mentioned before yeah. that uh, third and one, he could have leaned forward and get it. Why? Who called that? What, what you thought I, on that? I, that completely bonehead bonnet play. Like, okay, so I know that every time Rogers runs, I'm kind of like, oh, no, 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 no. but like for real, by the time that play developed into the complete and utter crap show that it was, I was like, dude, just dive forward. Seriously, there was, in the end, when he did finally choose to throw the ball, there was a few yards, maybe a yard or two in front of him where he easily could have, I mean, I don't want to say easily because nothing is easy in the NFL, but, you know, um, I mean, I, I, I just, I was like, why don't you run for it? I understand that I'm sure that the coaches have, like, threatened him within an inch of his life to say, hey, don't be running out there. You look for every single possible option before you do, blah, 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 blah. So I kind of get it to a point because he's probably had that beat out of him a little bit. But at the same time, it just seems like silly that in the end he didn't just die forward and get the first down. And then it ended up being a total poop fiesta. So I want, whoever designed that play, whether it was Rogers on the fly or if it was McCarthy being a play caller again or if it was – um, I think it was just broken yeah. from the beginning. It's part of the problem. It was terrible from the beginning. You know, like yeah. you said, you could have just fallen forward and got in the first down. But no, we're going to bomb yeah. it to like 10,000 yards to see what happens. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. But uh, I think part of this was they couldn't get off the ground. I think part of it was because they really were the walking wounded. Everyone who was a starter was hurt. Montgomery, who wasn't hurt, got hurt, which left Jeff Janis, uh, a hurt Randall Cobb, who was getting double teamed. And a couple plays, Jared Aberderis, which made me really excited. Um, I'm really glad he was on the active roster because I don't know if they had anybody ready to do kickoff returns without him there. And he seemed to hold mm-hmm. his own. He, he hit the ground running. I was really impressed with him. So do you think that as Montgomery is, is healing up, they're going to really start working – Aberdeer's in no more plays, so I noticed he'd lined up in the slot a couple times, but he wasn't the target. What do you think is going to happen as everyone is healing? Well, my my question on that before I start to assume that we're going to be bringing in these boys um, to try and play is we've got a bye week here, and I don't know where Devontae Adams is at with his recovery, but if he and Ty can get right before the game in a couple of weeks, then I don't really see, think we're going to see a lot of Aberderis on anything other than special teams. Um, I can see where they might try to work him in a little bit, but I get the impression that they're still really wanting to hold those guys off a, a little bit and bring in um, people that Rodgers knows and trusts um, if possible. So I guess that's kind of my hope is that, you know, this bye week really offers us the opportunity to heal up some of these issues, like you mentioned, the walking wounded, it does seem a lot like that. And so I'm just hoping that a few of our key players who are out are able to come back and play for the Broncos game because obviously that's going to be a biggie. That defense is incredibly terrifying, in my opinion. So, But their offense is not, is the thing. And we'll talk about I know. that. I know. As we get to the end of the show, it's it's going to be, it's totally a Thunderdome game. It's like two teams enter, one team leaves, and one one will be undefeated, the other one will not. Um, Yeah, pretty much. The last I remember reading about Devontae Adams was at the end of last week. Um, I haven't seen much about him since, but the idea was to rest him through the bye week. He had had started limited practice, so he's he's on his feet. He's, He's starting to go through drills. So I think he will be ready. Um, it yeah. sounds like, with all indications, that that um, 
that Ty Montgomery, and I knew it was an ankle yesterday because I actually watched him as they, they took him to the training table. They took his shoe off, like, oh, it's his ankle. It's not his knee, thank God. Um, mm-hmm. And then he also rode in the front seat of the cart. So that's always a good sign, too. If you're in the back seat, mm-hmm. you, blew your, you blew your knee out. Um, um, but uh, I think they will both be ready. James Jones, is it a hamstring or a groin? It's something like that. Should hopefully be healed up by then. And each week, Randall comes doesn't land on his shoulders. I think it is too, but he was, it's not bad enough that he could play. So I think, you know, a good week off of R&R going back to uh, California or whatever he does will be good for his hamstring. And then Cobb, you know, every week that he doesn't land on his shoulder is a week that he's getting better. Um, yeah, exactly. so I think our receiving core will be back. I'm on that camp where I'm just not enamored with Jared Aberderis. I'm not Jared Aberderis with Jeff Janis. I would love to see Aberderis get, um, installed more into the offense because I think Rodgers does trust him, where I think he's, Janice is still earning Rodgers' trust because I think of the offseason praise that Rodgers has for, for Aberderis. I think there is a potential to work him into the offense. But I could be yeah. wrong. I don't know. It feels so, like Jeff Janice is, like, out there, you know, like, you know, like, woo-hoo! I don't know. I get the impression that his discipline isn't all the way there. And, and again, that's such an impression because I don't know. But. Oh, I, I, but the thing is, I'm right on with you. I think he runs wild routes, and that's why I'm absolutely convinced that that bomb of a pass was not intended. He's like, I'm here. I'll catch it. Voila. Yeah, I got this. <laughs> Which is like, you know, I, all I can see is you, I, I think of that line from uh, from um, Major League where it's Willie Mays Hayes. He goes, you may run like Mays, but you bat like, you know, chiz. It's like, don't effing do it again. Yeah. <laughs> where I think he gets oh, lucky. Much, yeah. um, but I, I think that that play was just, you know, two steps away from something catastrophic and taking our tight end out. It's like, congratulations, you knocked out Richard Rodgers. It's a good thing he fell. I think you would have ran into him had he not. But um, somebody, I can't remember who I saw on Twitter, where they like, okay, he doesn't remind me of an undisciplined Jordy Nelson. They reminded me, I forget who it was. Whoever it is, please tweet me who said this. That this, this, this person on Twitter said it reminded he is now reminding him of a Bill Schrader. Fast, but not the cleanest. Because he is fast, well, and he does have some benefit on special teams. I don't know very much about Bill Schrader. If I'm being honest. That's because you're young and I'm in. old. <laughs> it's probably that's probably what it is. It's totally what it is because yeah, I'm old yeah, and yeah. you're not as old. But Colleen is older than all of us, nah, nah. Yeah. Colleen is old. She's still not called in by the way. She must still be she still must be on her way and home. So it's just you and or I Or she forgot or whatever, fine, blow us off, <laughs> whatever. You know, yeah. she got dancing by Bakhtiari's hair or cool. something. <laughs> We're cool. well, he does have better hair than me. I'll give him that. It. All right. So, so um, we go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. All right, I'll go no, ahead. You go. This is a hot mess. Just two of us here, and we're totally winging it tonight. <laughs> um, before I switch switch gears and start talking about the defense, let's talk about the running game. That's kind of what's up with Eddie Lacy? Is he hurt more than he's saying? Because he's really been a non-issue the entire season. Well, and, yeah, I, I'm a little confused. My opinion is that he must be a little hurt. Because I feel like it's not even just that he's um, – I feel like it's not even just that he's not getting very many yards. I feel like he's not gotten a lot of carries, you know. I, I feel like part of it is maybe he's on, like, a really low pitch count. And if he's, if he's coming out, if he's only able to get a couple yards at a time, then they're going, okay. He's still not right. We need to pull. Um, we need to pull uh, him out of there and just put. Um, I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here because I'm at work. Anyway, uh, we need to pull. Um, what am I talking about, Kelly? I totally Stark. Forgot. Stark. Pull Lacey. Put in somebody else. Well, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm so sorry. My, I am not in it with it today. No, that's what I'm saying. We got to pull him and you know give Stark most of the carries. Um, and just give him a chance to heal up. That's the only explanation I really have, Kelly. I don't really know why else he would be, like, hardly out there, and when he is, he's not really able to do a whole lot. I mean, I know that our offensive line is a little bit beat up, and so that could be part of it, but I don't know. I I feel like it has to be a continued issue with the ankle, and hopefully, again, this bye week can help him recover. 
And I think it's a combination of that and the line. The line has been kind of shaky. This is the first time in weeks that the starting five have been there. Um, but you know, definitely last week when you had musical guards, you know, I think you, know, you had Lang, then he was hurt, then it was, then it was uh, Barkley who was in for a bit, then there was Josh Walker. And then for a little bit, J.C. Treader even had some play too. Um, I think when you start playing musical line, I think your running game is the first thing that suffers from it. And yeah. then you've got a very two-dimensional you know, offensive scheme where it's like, okay, it's all on Aaron Rodgers. Um, and then it becomes really predictable. And if you have a hurt receiving core, then it's like, okay, we're just going to take Rodgers out and you have no defense, you have no offense to be pumping, which I think is a little bit of what we saw. I think, yeah. all started, I think the line isn't 100%. Um, you have Brian Bulaga, who's just a few weeks out of uh, some unspecified knee surgery. Uh, I don't know whether it was cleaning up cartilage, if it was repairing his MCL, which I don't know if I buy that because that type of ligament repair is usually if you've completely torn it and he's back too soon for completely tearing it. So I have no idea what type of surgery he had. And you have Lang, right. who I doubt is 100%. Um, so I think it's kind of the uh, death of a thousand paper cuts. Everybody's hurt, and I think it's just you're getting the trickle down effect of lines hurt, which means the running game, which is already hurt, is going to suffer. Which means everything is right. on the receiving core, which is nobody to throw to. Which means you don't have any offense, and you're just the sheer luck and determination of Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> so it was a perfect storm, <laughs> storm of bad news. It was like a tsunami of injuries. Yeah, so I'm gonna, a tsunami of injuries. Yeah. So I'm going to switch gears, and I'm going to say and talk about the defense. I'm going to start by saying this really quietly because I'm probably going to curse him, but hey, Tone Jones is actually having a pretty good year. I know. It's super weird. I, I, I super weird. Don't. Don't, I, I, say, I worry if we say it out loud, we're going to totally curse him. No. either stuck you know, dead toads through a straw or he's going to get hurt. But hey, Tone Jones is not that bad. I know. I'm actually super excited about him. That other one I was going to sit over here and knock on what's really hard about is the fact that Clay Tucky is still not hurt. Yeah. I knock something that's wood-like. Yeah, like per, like per goal. I don't really care. Just just knock on something wood-related because seriously, I mean, thank goodness. <laughs> These guys are staying relatively healthy. Um, I mean, the defense but is actually here. should do pretty well. But one of the frustrating things I noticed yesterday was they weren't blitzing with Matthews, which uh, either they just decided to double team him, or they were having him, you know, drop back and try to defend like the pass. It's like, why don't you just blitz him? Because that is why he looked so good the week before. It's like he was slipping through the A gap like nobody saw him. He rarely tried that. They were putting him on the outside, or they were having him, you know, defend the pass. So why the change in strategy? I think that a lot of it had to do with the quarterback because Philip Rivers, if you watched him yesterday, was really able to get the ball up fast. I mean, Aaron Rodgers fast. And so if you try to send a blitz at him all the time, he is going to make you pay for it because of his ability to get the ball out of his hand quickly. And so, I don't know, I think that that's a lot of the reason that they didn't do a lot of blitzing but rather just really tried to – to, you know, rush the normal amount and, you know, have people drop back into coverage so that, you know, it, because if they are thinking, do we really want to take this risk and send Clay or whomever else into blitz and then all of a sudden we're leaving our, you know, the secondary wide open because because he can get the ball out so quickly. And I think that was part of the reason that they changed up that strategy. Yeah, I think you may be on to that. Um, I think what – I think – and I'll admit, underappreciate Phil Rivers. I, just, I yeah. think of that, that crap year a couple of years ago, and then he came back and then got the comeback year of the award. I'm like, you mean he did suck, so he got an award? But he really <laughs> is in that rare – he really is a good quarterback, and I think a lot of people please yeah. forget that. It's like he's been stuck on a crap team for a lot of years, but he's quite good. And you're right, mm-hmm. he's very fast, and he'll he'll beat you. Um mm-hmm. Granted, we made him throw for a bunch of garbage yards because at the end of the day, his defense got it done. But he, what did he have, like 500 yards or something ridiculous in the air? It was, it was, it was impressive. It was ridiculous. It was over 500. But I think that that was – that almost seemed to be, like, the entire strategy for the defense was, okay, we're not going to blitz him because he's, you know, super, duper good. He gets the ball too fast. And, yeah, we might get to him sometimes, but not all the time. And, when we can't, which is going to be a large portion of the time, 
you know, we're, we're going to pay for it, and that's not good. So then we switch to this whole theory of, well, we're just going to give him yards here, there, and everywhere else, and we'll tighten up when it gets to the red zone or whatever the case may be. And that kind of defense, just similar to the pre-defense, is what's going to get a team that can pile up a ton of yards but not score a ton of points. And it seems like the defense was a bit of a sieve starting in the second quarter, so that was kind of frustrating. But, again, in the end, um, the offense, hobbled as it may be, is able to pull out enough points so that we didn't have to, to worry about losing. So, I mean, I think it was a bend but don't break, exactly like Thad said, and switching to that is a product of having um, a really, really quick release quarterback like Philip Rivers, who will make you pay for it a large number or a large portion of the time if you keep listing him. Yeah, he's definitely not like a Russell Wilson or a uh, Squidward Tentacle that you get really frustrated and they throw throw garbage into the air. He is pretty accurate. Um, I would mm-hmm. uh, I have to joke that he could be the FedEx Air Play or whatever they call it, the passing you know, guy of the, of the week because he had such huge numbers. But it, it reminds me a lot of when the Packers take on Minnesota. It's, it's you know they they you've got Adrian Peterson and they have him run for like 200 yards. It's like wow, why do we give up that much? But he doesn't score anything. I think we saw the opposite mm-hmm. of this, this week where he's like, yeah, sure, let him throw you know throw for 10 billion yards, but if it doesn't end up in the end zone, who cares? But 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 I think what helps at the same time is is not only did they neutralize him in the sense of less points, we really did shut down the run game again. I don't think mm-hmm. there's been a, a running back, and correct me if I'm wrong, that's actually had 100 yards on the Packers this year. And that's a big difference where we used to get gashed week after week um, trying to defend the run, and we're doing a better job of neutralizing players. Yep. Absolutely, and you take away that aspect of a team's game and you can make them one-dimensional, yeah, they might throw for 500 billion yards, but if you're removing an entire dimension of their game, then you're going to be able to come out with, with more wins than that simply because um, simply because they don't have the ability to um, always be – I mean, yeah, they threw for a lot of yards, but if you take away that run and you don't make the defense respect – I mean, that they can't make the defense respect the run, and so basically the defense just kind of knows that, okay, well, then we're just going to drop back into coverage because we have no reason to be up here on the line all the time, um, then you're going to be able to play those games where you give up a bunch of cap and yards, but then, you, but then you don't give up a lot of points simply because you took the run away from them. Yeah, I think we did a good job at that. Um, unfortunately, I think they did a good job with us doing the same thing. They shut down the run. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one thing I really hope the Packers will come back after the bye week is, is have a stout running game again. Um, and Starks was on fire yesterday. Of course, I started Eddie Lacy and I got rid of Starks on my, my fantasy squad. Oh, that uh, was That was painful. <laughs> <laughs> but other people, I think, that had a really good defensive game, um, there was Randall, a rookie, won the whole stinking thing. And he wasn't making rookie mistakes. Yeah, He could tell you what color the uh, receiver's eyes were and what chewing gum he was, he was playing because he was playing that tight. And I think, um, didn't he have a comment that he really was kind of figuring rivers out and he knew exactly where he was going to put it? Of course, he's going to say that because he's going to be like, oh, I was really smart and I fucked it. But he really <laughs> rivers out. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it was fun to watch. Uh, it's fun to watch a rookie really start to come into their own. Um, I am so excited for his potential. I mean, I think that yeah, give him, you know, into next year, and I mean, we have a Pro Bowl quality player there because he's quick. He can read the quarterback. He's got that instinct that you're always looking for in a corner. Um, and I think that's going to – I think he's going to blow up here soon. I think he's already starting to demonstrate why he's a really valuable um, asset for this team. Well, he definitely has a very high football IQ. He's definitely reading the elite quarterbacks now. You know, it's the one thing knowing mm-hmm. that, that that Kaepernick's going to throw some garbage um, to the you know, to the the sideline, but knowing that that Rivers can thread a needle and really knew exactly where he was going to put it, and his timing was impeccable on that last play. I'm like, we're gonna, I kept thinking, I'm like, crap, we're going to score, we're going to go to overtime, and I'm going to be stuck in Green Bay, and I'm going to get back at like 3 in the morning, hooray. Because <laughs> uh, honestly, that was jaded me. I'm like, I have to drive three hours. Please don't go to overtime. Just, just end it already. <laughs> and he did. Yeah. And I was, I was yeah. where they were going to score, but he really impressed me. 
he's not making rookie mistakes. Um, he's playing really clean ball. Uh, we didn't see much as, uh, as much of Quentin Rollins this week, but he had his game last last week. And I, you know, at the draft, I was surprised. I figured we would take a linebacker in the first round, and then I thought we'd take Quentin Rollins. And that was right, haha. Uh-huh. Uh, but a, but a defensive back <laughs> in the second round. But now I'm really happy because I think we finally realized that our inside linebacker was Clay Matthews because he's really having a standing year. And now mm-hmm. I'm really thankful that Ted Thompson took defensive backs in the first two rounds because they're already factoring in. They were all, you know, you've got the nickel package, and they're all in there then. And I think just like, like, uh, ha-ha, Clinton Dix was worked in and you know, started off as, as the, the nickel his safety, suddenly as a starter, I think you're going to see that more with Demarius Randall, and I think he's going to take make a run for it to be a starter permanently. Yeah, and I think he should. I mean, one thing I really enjoy about having a rookie coming up the way that he is is that you're going to raise the level of play of all the other guys in his position because they're going, oh, crap, you know, here we are settled into our roles, and now this kid comes along and is challenging us, and now we got to pick it up again because otherwise I'm going to lose my job, you know. And so I I really enjoy, I think it has a lot of benefits for a team when a rookie really starts to come up because, you know, everybody's going to be looking over their shoulder going, hey, I better get it together. I better pick up my speed. I better, you know, practice a little bit later. I better read the playbook a little harder because I want to lose my job. And so that's the other benefit that I think is really great. And, yeah, Quentin Rollins, we didn't hear his, his name a lot, but, um, you know, he's not going to have the kind of game he had last week every week. So um, I'm excited about both of those guys. They're probably one of my favorite parts of this season. And this is where Colleen would probably lose her mind and try to stab me, but I think one of the best things we did in the off season was was offload Tremont Williams because I yep. don't think we our secondary, if we would have went with him as a starter, we would have had the same issues we had last year. But now you have fresh blood infused in, into the secondary. I think it's a lot more physical. It's a lot faster. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you look at it, and they're challenging all the time. It isn't the, you know, the real soft coverage. Yeah, there was some soft coverage yesterday of drumming bananas. But for the most part, they're running neck and neck. They, you're seeing more uh, defensive pass year appearance. But like McCarthy said in his presser today, he likes those types of penalties because it means you're trying. Exactly. It is that you're gambling. You're, you're actually going for the ball. And I think that's why I don't have a problem either with, like, ha-ha, getting, getting the flag every once in a while because he is there and he's going to lay you out or he's going to get the ball. I yeah. think he's going to watch you catch it. He's going to stop you. And I think this is raising the level of play because Sam Shields, I think, is having a better year than in years past. And he had two interceptions, attempts at interceptions that he should have had. But I think compared this year to last year, he's even raised his level of play. And so I think, like you said, I think he wants to keep his position. Yep. So any any other Maybe defenders right? stand out to you yesterday? I know I know Matthew was kind of he, he was still there. Peppers had a good game. Anyone else really stand out to you yesterday? Um, not necessarily. I mean, I really, again, I feel like the defense was the difference in the last couple of weeks just because of there was a big game plan for Philip Rivers. And um, actually, my dad made a really interesting comment as you were talking about Philip Rivers being elite and how he's really done well and how he's functioned. Um, he said that uh, they had to watch um, the Vikings game yesterday and and you know, of course, yeah. I know. And so he watched a good chunk of it anyway. He's like, you know, it's really interesting to watch the Vikings game. Who were they playing again? I don't even remember. I never remember anything else from game day other than the Packers. I don't remember who the Vikings um, were playing. Anyway. Friday, I forget who they played, but yeah, totally. Funny. Anyway, so the Vikings are, you know, they're playing, and um, he's watching that. He's like, it's so interesting to hop over to then, you know, the Packers game because the level of play is just so – because it, the watching that Packers-San Diego game, which was downright gritty, it was clearly meticulously planned. The talent was able to rise to the occasion on both sides of the ball because we have to remember to give – a lot of credit to San Diego for what they accomplished yesterday. We are very, very good at what we do, but at the same time, they're also very good at what they do, especially on offense. And so, you know, we have to give them the to say, hey, you know what, they're going to throw, they're going to get their yard, they're going to get their yard, but, you know, as long as we game plan a certain way, then we should be able to play the odds and come out on top. 
And my dad said, you know, watching the, the, the difference between the two games was just stark. He's like, I felt like I was watching a high school game and then watching, like, an elite football game. And it, so that was kind of interesting. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that and I, in the end the defense played, played, did what they were supposed to do as a whole. I think they, were, they did what they were supposed to do, but there wasn't really anybody who super stood out to me, and that's because that really wasn't the, the way that yesterday's game was designed, I don't think. And I think one of the reasons the line didn't stand out yesterday is because B.J. Raji wasn't there. And I think we really noticed his yeah. absence. I think he's having a very good season. And I think yeah. it's definitely a contract, show me the money type of um, he wants to stay with the team. And this is a do or die season for him. Um, he definitely yeah. noticed his absence because I think the big guy is flexible and faster than everyone realizes. And um, yeah, oh, yeah. Troy Guyon was in. But yeah, I think he paled in comparison to, to Raji. Um, but I think you you just hit on a great point. It's like you look at we're always like, oh, Rogers had a horrible day. Well, but like probably 25 out of 32 um, quarterbacks in the league would love to have his ability and his numbers. And so his crappy day is a lot of quarterbacks' good day. And I think we have to exactly. keep reminding ourselves that. It's like, he's, he's yeah, he's phenomenal and out of this world. But even on his pedestrian horrible days, it's really not that bad. But looking I forward, I was, look, I was looking at the schedule, and um, the last few minutes we started looking forward to it beyond the bye week. Is it's not a cakewalk. We it's Thunderdome in two weeks in Denver, so it's like two teams enter, one team leaves, the other one has a loss. The, the winner will be undefeated. Yeah. And then after that, we play Cam Newton and another undefeated team. It's like we don't have any coasting, i.e. playing the rest of the NFC North for a couple weeks. So it's a, yeah, it's, I, think it's, it's, I think even playing the NFC North is tough because if you watch the games of the, of the NFC North, yeah, those teams may be kind of terrible, but when it comes down to it, those, these divisional games are always like uh, because the teams know each other super well, and it's always kind of a bit of a bloodbath. And so I don't think that even those are necessarily gimmies, even if we're dealing with tough teams, or even if we're dealing with teams that we perceive to be easy simply because they're in a division. But I think there's no coasting after the bye week is what I was trying to say. You know, I, I think yes. Denver – Denver's offense, I'm not convinced, is you know, you've got Manning and his supposed noodle arm, but he's still managing to win games. But I think it's also yeah. on the backs of their defense. That is going to be one scary defense, but I think it's going to be another yeah. test. And it's not going to yep. get any easier playing Cam Newton the week, at, week afterwards. Well, especially with That's the style of quarterback I'm... play that Cam has. Oh, definitely. You know, you either have bad Cam or good Cam, and lately we've been seeing out of this world Cam Newton. But that said, I'm not as worried about taking on Arizona. Everyone was talking about they're the team to beat. Well, I think they're proving they're not. What are they, two and four now? They've lost more than they ever thought they were going to lose. Yeah. So I'm not as scared of Arizona. But, you know, you're, it's, we're not at the halfway point of the season. But I think – it's it's going to be a it's going to be a fight till the end, and I you know we definitely have one of the tougher schedules this year. Um, I'm not as worried about Denver. I think Denver won't be nearly as challenging as as Cam Newton and the Panthers, but I could be totally wrong about that. Yeah, I my opinion on the Denver game is that we're our defense is just really going to have to step up. I think that it's, it's a lot of it, first of all, depends on who we get back from injury um, because their defense is epic. And so if we don't have, if we're not firing at all cylinders to the offense, I cannot see how we're going to score more than 17 to 20 points. That being said, Peyton Manning needs to throw all the interceptions and all the land, period. I think that our defense is going to need a pick six or two. Um, I think they're really just going to have to step it up, step it up and stop that offense. Um, as much as possible and keep them 14 points or below because if they don't, I really have a bad feeling about this game. I think our defense is really just going to have to show what they're made of in this one. And this is what a situation in which I see, I say blitz until you cannot blitz anymore because you're dealing with an immobile quarterback and a suspect with a noodle arm. Line, with a noodle arm. And he's been his release has been slower. This is a situation where I say send Clay and unleash the beast. Oh, I totally agree. If you if you have the defense that played last week and the week before that, I think we could totally annihilate Peyton Manning, which is fine because he's not one of my favorite quarterbacks. I'd love to see him on his back early and often. 
Um, but I think that's going to be the key to the success. It's like, yes, I hope our receivers are healthy and Aaron Rodgers can put up big numbers like we're used to. But this game is going to definitely rise and fall on the defense because yeah. Aaron's going to have his hands full taking on their defense, and they know exactly how to neutralize them. But if we can beat them at their own game, and it's going to be it's going to be a battle of defenses because we know that Peyton Manning is if he's if he's uninhibited, you know, he's unneutralized, so to speak. He could have a you know a monster a day, but but I don't think they've played as tough of a defense as the Packers have played this year. Um, right. So I think we could could bring him down, and I think if we attack him. Like, we, we took out the Rams. I think we have a good chance of, of winning it. But this is going to be probably the, the biggest challenge of the season so far. Because everyone's oh, like, oh, the revenge tour, which I loved. But let's face it, San Francisco and Seattle really are not that good this year. Yeah, I think the first enough. real test, you know, I think San Diego was the first test, but I think a bigger test is going to be Denver. And it's at yeah. Denver. So we've got we got to bring our A game with the defense. On an away uh, on on the road, so if I think if we can win that, I think we're really well on our way to being you know top top of the uh, the power rankings. Not that I really care about power rankings because they're subjective little uh, pers- you know popularity contests. Yeah. No, I'm looking forward to it. And um, and do we want to do predictions next week? Are we? Yeah, we'll do predictions, next, predictions week? next week. Yeah, we'll you know, do we... next week. This is usually where we start ripping on Jay, but he's not here. Um, yeah, no, but we did have throwback weekend, so can I just say one more thing about your dad? He was grading my okay, birth let's yesterday, about... which was hilarious. Okay, my dad, so the people who don't know my dad, he's more deadpan than Jay. He's kind of like... Super eh. deadpan. Yeah, but, yeah, he's you know, hysterical. And he's over the corner going, Brrr. and my dad's like, well, that's just a three. <laughs> <laughs> he has lots of deep thoughts. <laughs> and then he's, he's there very for a while cool. and he's, I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, he's like, well, I'm, I'm your shade tree. And he's literally stood there for like 20 minutes blocking the sun from yeah. my face because I was I cannot not believe I dragged my 70, 73 year old dad to a uh, tailgate. My mom thought he was nuts. He's like, my mother's like, so how do you know all these people? I'm like, well, they're friends from, you know, the internet. And she's like, why? Well, how do you know they're not going to kill you? I'm like, well, they haven't killed me yet, Bob, and I think we're good. Yeah, so my mom yeah. thought my dad and like four years dorks. And, you know, my dad met everybody and realized my friends aren't that weird. Um, he you didn't know, die. So, I Mom, I win, you that. lose. <laughs> But yeah, no, so funny. yeah, I got. I, what about my dad? What? Yeah, no, 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 I was going to say that I got to bring my family this year too. I got to bring my brother and my sister-in-law and my nephew. And my nephew was. I mean, you did not get to meet my nephew, but my nephew was there for a couple of hours at uh, the party on Saturday night. And there was a DJ. And of course, you know how being a throwback weekend does. It's very quiet. Uh, people are filtering in like significantly between like. Um, more people end up showing up like after nine o'clock. Well, so Henry basically took over the dance floor and was like, he had his little Mardi Gras beads from the DJ and he was just so darn cute out there. And so everybody got to meet him except for you. And um, so that was really fun. That was a highlight for me. It was a very different throwback weekend than what I've become accustomed to. I got to do a couple of breweries, my brother and, I I really had a great time this year. Like I know it wasn't necessarily all like quote sanctioned because there weren't t shirts and koozies and um all of that, but I really I, I felt like it was kinda of going back to its roots a little bit. I really, really enjoyed it. So Which yeah. I, I wish I could have been there Saturday and I was visiting family, you know, um who have health issues, I'll leave it at that, on the other side of the family. Yeah. So yeah. I was doing that. Okay. Yeah, I'll just say cancer cancer sucks. Um, it does. I, I'm happy to work. I'm happy to see that you know, throwback, whatever incarnation it was, you're still brought some really awesome people together. I wish we could have met the exactly. UK Packers. And guys, we are going to have a joint show. Mark my words, we're going to do it. It's going to happen this year. Um, I know because they were doing the whole Rush Center, you know, taking them the whole experience. They should have stopped by. Losers, you did not. Except we'll have pints. We will have pints soon. Um, but yeah, I like how <laughs> throwback really got back to its roots of. Friends getting together with with uh, common interests and just really having a good time this weekend. And I had a blast. Mm-hmm. I, I can't. I still can't believe it. I brought my old man and he had a good time. 
Because <laughs> he, really he, he wasn't miserable. I thought he would be, but he was happy. Yeah, no. give him a drink, popcorn, and some lots of awesome. snacks, and he's a happy guy. Exactly. He's a happy guy. Uh, so Jay, you're a loser food. for not. Jay, you're a loser for not coming. So I guess we should roll the credits just in your honor because yeah. you're here. We would ask you what you think, him. but we're gonna roll the credits. Roll, roll the credits. Roll, roll time. Credits. I not say roll time. So what a one point pirate. Go yell something. We'll come up with a theme. <laughs> hey, we managed exactly. to go a whole hour of slathering, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we rock! Eddie Lacey, Mike Daniels, Gilbert Brown, Don Barclay, Micah Hyde, your Green Bay Packers, yesterday's legends and today's superstars. From corporate or nonprofit events to private parties, add some spice. Hire a Packers player from Mayfield Sports Marketing. For details, just go to PackersTalk.com and click on Player Appearances. Are you looking for some signed Packer memorabilia? Look no further than Waukesha Sports Cards. If the Green Bay Packer can sign it, Waukesha Sports Cards has it. Check our website for upcoming Packer player and legend signings. Go to WaukeshaSportsCards.com. 